Hello and welcome again to What If Natives Won, a video blog and channel about alternate history and American Indians, Native Americans, indigenous peoples. This is the 12th video of 27 Plan Ones. My name is Al Carroll. I'm Associate Professor of History at Northern Virginia Community College. I've written mostly about wars, veterans, human rights, and genocide. I'm also, together with Rob Schmidt of Bluecorn Comics, editing and putting out a short story anthology, What If Natives Won? That's what this video blog and channel are about. There's a huge lack of alternate history written about American Indians, indigenous people. Many people don't like to think about genocides in America. They likely were never taught about them. Many don't want to be reminded, want to believe these genocides never happened or that it was an accident. I've had great success using alternate history to teach my students, show them that absolutely nothing in history was inevitable. It never had to be. The worst of human history is always a conscious choice. How things turn out is based on how evil the evil choose to be and how well and how strongly good people choose to stand up to them or stop them. The way things turned out in history took a very specific set of circumstances. Sometimes history can turn on very small things. Change even one and you have an entirely different history, different present, different society. It may be hard to hear this, but we live right now in a dystopian world. One of the worst of all possible outcomes for anyone who is not white. America is today 98% non-native. At least 75 million to 112 million natives were killed by not one genocide, but a series of them. There were many of these genocides, the last of them ending only in the year 2000. In America, Brazil, Canada, Guatemala, Argentina, Mexico, Peru, and elsewhere. On top of that is massive genocide denial. This is not taught in almost all American schools. There are racist images everywhere that are often not admitted to be racist. But so much of this could change if you have a different kind of American nation from the start. What if Ben Franklin brings more of the Iroquois Constitution into the U.S. Constitution? We have to start with some basics. Much that isn't known to most Americans isn't taught to them in most public schools. The founders were heavily influenced by the Iroquois system of government. Ben Franklin was the colonial representative to them, an ambassador. He had seen firsthand how well Iroquois democracy worked. There was no European model for democracy the founders could use except the ancient and failed Roman Republic and the distinctly anti-democratic and elitist ancient Athens. The Iroquois influenced Franklin and he in turn played the largest role in writing the Articles of Confederation. Many, most of the founders had also read John Locke and Baron Montesquieu, both of them studying and very influenced by accounts of Iroquois society. Montesquieu and then the founders got the idea of checks and balances from Iroquois government. Right after U.S. independence, America had radical experiments in social revolution. Pennsylvania attempted early crude versions of anarchism and socialism. Women got the right to vote in New Jersey. Slavery ended in northern states. Aristocracy titles and feudalism in the U.S. ended. Official state churches ended. Most states confiscated loyalist property. Mobs often burned or seized wealthy homes. And Thomas Paine's most radical idea is today being tried out in both North America and Europe. Guaranteed basic income. But what really scared the founders was Shays' Rebellion. Farmers in West Massachusetts stopped foreclosures of their farms and shut down the courts by protest. Some founders thought the French Revolution was happening here. Jefferson called it Liberty Run Mad. Washington described the protest as anarchy and confusion. What scared them the most was that the rebellion lasted over a year and was finally only crushed by a private mercenary army. So they called for a constitutional convention, most of them arguing the wealthy must be protected from the public above all else. If you have any kind of hero worship for the founders, think of what they also considered doing. Presidents for life, elected by Congress and not the public. A senate of aristocrats, appointed for life by the president, not elected by the public. The American public almost never voted on the Constitution. Only special conventions did. Rhode Island was the only state to hold a popular vote, limited to property-owning white males. 
and there the Constitution was defeated by 10 to 1. It took three years of the founders fighting tooth and nail against what the American public wanted to get the Constitution passed. So how did it finally pass? Ben Franklin owned most of the newspapers in the U.S. and refused to print any criticism. Wealthy elites also boycotted any newspapers opposing the Constitution, shutting them down. Franklin by this time was very elderly. He had more radical proposals than the other founders, but later called for compromise as the best they could do. The Constitution, especially at the start, was not Republican, but anti-democratic, deliberately elitist. Women, blacks, even free ones, and natives could not vote. The first immigration law in 1790 went farther, saying only whites can become U.S. citizens. Territories couldn't vote. Neither could D.C., the only non-voting capital in world history. Seven million Americans today still have no congressmen. There were high property requirements to vote. In the South, slave owners were almost the only voters. And of course, the elitist, anti-democratic, and anti-republican electoral college intended as a veto over the public. Under the Constitution, the president has vast powers. He can send troops, invade, even start wars without asking the public. The U.S. has been at war for, for 222 of the past 239 years, invading 84 nations, plus using force against hundreds of native tribes, forcibly removing them, even taking part in California Indian genocide. What if Franklin had used his influence and his owning most of the powerful newspapers in America to push for a better system? How was the Iroquois Constitution very different from the U.S. one? Women could vote, women could own property, and women can impeach leaders. Franklin was an early feminist, most scholars agree. Some might argue it's unlikely he could get the vote for women way back in the 1780s. But remember that in New Jersey, they did succeed in doing just that. What Franklin could do is push to let states decide if women could vote. This means the U.S. would gradually see one state after another letting women vote, and all women voting, likely before 1920, as happened in our own time. Franklin was also an abolitionist for over four decades, but he could not call for abolishing slavery without slave states blocking it. But Franklin could demand slavery be barred from new territories, which almost passed under the Articles of Confederation. This means slavery would be abolished sooner, perhaps 20 or 30 years old or earlier, and without as long or possibly any civil war at all. The biggest difference of all Franklin could do is limit the power of the president. Franklin, in fact, favored no president, but committee instead. So did other founders like John Randolph. Other founders objected it would make war more difficult, like having three generals instead of one. It didn't pass. But if Franklin uses his media empire, it might. A U.S. which must get an executive committee to approve of invasions of native people or other nations will invade less often. Murderous Indian haters like Andrew Jackson find themselves blocked, their ethnic cleansing prevented. A U.S. which invades less often is a nation with more surviving native people. Natives and all of the non-whites get civil rights sooner. Both of those certainly count as native victory. This is the end of the 12th video. I look forward to your comments and questions and will answer them as often as I can. Racism, genocide denial, childish behavior, personal attacks get deleted. But I do recognize some questions will be asked in ignorance because much of the facts I point to are new to most people. They were never taught about this. They've been raised in denial since denying indigenous genocides is taught in almost all public schools. Next time we will discuss what if the U.S. makes the Delaware Indian Nation the 14th state. Please repost freely, subscribe, like, share, and comment. I will post again in about a week. This has been What If Natives 1 video blog and channel.